We spend far too much time worried about what makes us different than the next person or better than the next person and not enough time thinking about why we should respect the next person. We all have a story, an overarching theme that runs through our lives and makes us who we are. The problem is, we think that since each of our stories is different, there's not a lot of perceived value or shared struggle. But we have far more in common than we can imagine, and what motivates one person can certainly help us as well. The Third Lab Podcast is about understanding, respecting, and appreciating the struggle that it takes to overcome immeasurable odds in order to reach your destiny. Join me as I interview and bond with some of the most inspiring and incredible people, diving into their why to get a full understanding of their being. Without each other, we have nothing. So let's go on this adventure together and take on the future with open minds and open hearts. Welcome to the Third Lap Podcast. Hey, everybody. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of the Third Lap Podcast. Listen, man, you know, I really have to sit here and and just thank everyone that's come on the show and everyone that supported the show so far over four months of like actually releasing content and interviewing and catching up with folks that really mean a lot to me. And today is another opportunity. So if you hear my voice, you know that I'm talking to somebody just absolutely incredible. Um, Today is no different. I get a chance to connect with the homie Steve Jackson who's an advocate, CEO, and founder at Jackson Core, and maybe most importantly, right, like humbly being a decent man on that pathway towards being a decent man and decent human being, um, which he without a question is. So Steve, man, what's going on, brother? We connecting on this Sunday. How you doing today? It's snowing outside. We we just trying to stay warm. (laughs) Bro, I am, I'm honored to to be on your your podcast, bro. Same as you, man, trying to stay warm. Uh, physically, spiritually, mentally, man, just just trying to keep my heart warm, bro. That's 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 the name of the game. So. Yeah, especially in a global pandemic, that's that's work that we have to do. We got to keep ourselves grounded. Uh, we have to be nice to ourselves. We have to speak nicely to ourselves. We got to big ourselves up, man. Like my dad always told me, be your own best cheerleader. So everybody listening, make sure you're taking time out of every day, every week, month, year. Cheer yourself on. Be proud of the work that you out here doing, man. We surviving and we thriving. And so Steve, dude, so how we know each other. Um, so man, I've been hearing about you for years. Good stuff for years. Um, my cousin Troy, what up, Troy? Yo, he cool. uh he put me on to you years ago. He called me randomly one day. I was like, yo, Mal. He was like, yo, you gotta connect with this dude out here in Philly. Like, y'all will really get along, y'all really on the same type time. And it's like you gotta hit him up. Never hit you. We never connected. <laughs> we we never talked a single time after he after he told me about you. Um, but you know, Troy is a real, he a real G man. And so anybody that Troy going to speak highly of and, and thinks that I will get along with, you know, I got to show up and pay homage to, cause I know how Troy move. He, he moves correctly. And so fast forward, maybe four years and my wife, um, was talking about you cause y'all were working together and she was like, yo, like you really got to connect with this dude, Steve, like he's incredible never connected with you we didn't talk Um, (laughs) (laughs) so this second strike on me right um but so my wife had attended one of the and so what was the session that we attended it was just like a bunch of young professionals connecting and just really just being able to vibe after work so my wife connected on one of those i missed it because of work and then when it was over she was like malcolm next week like you gotta be on and so it was an order. She gave me the command. So I'm like, all right, <laughs> yes, ma'am. I saluted it. I took my orders. You know what I mean? Um, and I'm so happy I did, Joe, because A, the session itself was just amazing, Steve. I appreciate the fact that you made an opportunity. And I can't forget Ricardo, because like you all work so closely shout together. Out. So shout out Ricardo. You know, you mad love to you too. I'm gonna have you on here too. So I know less about you, Ricardo. So I got to get you on here because I gotta learn more. Um, but first, thank you to y'all, man, for making that space. It was incredible. It was much needed being able to connect with a bunch of strangers, but walk away from that conversation like, okay, my tribe grew a little bit, yo. Um, but was was really amazing. So thank you again for just making that space. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's that's how we met. People have been telling me for years to connect with Steve. I was like, okay, I got y'all. And then we never connected. And now here we are. So <laughs> it all worked out. But anything I miss about how we've connected or how we know each other? 
Bro, hit it on the head, man. I I I have a thought I want to dive into, but I but I know that there's a there's a process, so I don't want to I don't want to do too much. But yes, no, 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 dive in, bro. Well, this this is a conversation. We'll we'll get to the format when we have to, but this is a convo, so let's do it. Awesome. So it reminds me, first of all, yes, bro. I'm. It, it is an honor. Your your fam is popping. Um, I, it, it's an honor, bro. I um, you brought up uh. But before we hopped into the to the production piece, you brought up um, what books am I reading? I've been reading a number of different books for a number of different reasons. And one book I'm reading right now, or actually listening to the audio book, is called My Grandmother's Hands. Not sure if you're familiar with it, um, but it's a book about uh, you know like racialized trauma. Um, I can't Resma. I don't remember the, the author's last name, but Resma is his first name. Um, powerful book. And in the book, he walks through some harmonizing activities. And when you bring up um, the, what we were calling community care call is that kind of like um, happy hour, self-care, uh, virtual space. To me, as, as someone who does try and be a steward for that space, similar to your podcast, try and create that space that, that's safe for everybody. I, I imagine it as a place where we can all harmonize. You know what I'm saying? Like our frequencies change, our days are wild, our year has been wild, the next year is going to be wild. Like we, our frequencies are, can be all over the place. And to just create a space where we can, you know, community has a, a, a family, community, you know, whatever the, the, the measuring unit is, we as human beings have an ability to, to help each other harmonize. Like when we can harmonize together, we can find, um, we can find balance, you know what I mean? Which is for me, wellness. Um, and so that's what that space is, man. That's what I feel like you've done for me on a number of occasions to help me find my bearings, like harmonize, you know what I mean? So I appreciate you, bro. I appreciate yeah, man, you, you know, your, your, your frequency is high. So I appreciate that. It's, it's definitely a call to arms. So appreciate you, bro. Yeah, no doubt, man. And you know, it's important what you said, which is around just having those conversations, being able to talk to somebody. And if that person isn't in a situation to advise you on next steps or give you feedback, at least knowing that like they were listening, right? Like actively listening. You can tell that they're actively listening. You know, the, the conversations that you and I have had, it's just been back and forth, just building like, oh, that's where I'm at with it. Like, okay, let's talk about that. And we walk our way through it. Um, and that's so important. And I really felt like that was the space. Like I said, in the actual session, look, the last thing I was trying to do was get on a Zoom call at five o'clock after being on phone screens and Zooms all day long for work. Yes. Um, but it was the, <laughs> it was, it was impactful and it was important. And I look forward to the next opportunity to participate. Um, and so Resma Menachem, um, my grandmother's hands. Yeah, my mom had been talking to me a while about that book. I've never read it, but I've heard nothing but great things about it. And he has an LS, LMSW and a, and a master's of social work. So I know it's in depth because social work is some of the deepest people on this planet. So sounds like a great book. We'll definitely get into the reading at the very end too. Um, and so Steve, we talked about who you are. We talked about how we know each other. So now we gotta talk about what hood you repping, man. That's the this this the big yeah. piece right here. So where you from, Steve? Yeah, what hood you repping out here? Man, so I'm from uh, the Mount Airy section of Philadelphia. Um, shout out to all the folks from Mount Airy that that I haven't seen in many many years because I haven't been there in a little while. But interestingly enough, bro, I actually rode through Mount Airy last night, um, uh, doing some business stuff, dropping off some equipment uh, for some 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 video shoots, and I was riding through, and I hadn't been there in years. And I'm riding down Germantown Avenue through Chestnut Hill and then through Mount Airy. And it, it is such a, the reason that, that and bro, I don't know why your format is the way it is, but the reason why repping your hood is so important is because where you come from matters, where you're going matters, but like where you come from really matters. And, and to be able to have the awareness to, to, to see where you come from and not, and not have like a skew. I mean, we all have a skew, we all have a bias, but like, to be able to see it for what it is and, and, and love your history. You know what I'm saying? Love the good, the bad, the up, the down. Um, but to be able to ride through it and have, and have, um, you know, like emotional balance and, and, and to be able to just, it, it was just cool, man. It was a cool, it's funny. It's coincidental that you would ask me to rep my hood on the day after I rode through my old hood for the first time in years. Um, so yeah, bro, I'm from my 
Yo, the mean streets of Mount Airy, you mean know, streets, they, where the bro. gangsters is at. It's nothing but Bang, gangsters bro. in Mount Airy, bro. <laughs> Granola eating, Birkenstocks wearing. Word. They Thanks. got the trail mix on deck. They got the Prius in the driveway. <laughs> Don't play them, though. They, they'll get after you, boy. <laughs> you best stay off their lawn, bro. Thanks, bro. They're oh. still Eagles fans, so they'll, they'll, they'll get with you quick, bro. They'll, they'll, they'll oh, get with you. man. Nah, um, but yeah, I chose the Rep Your Hood section. First, I wanted to put it up front. But you hit the nail on the head. It's all about where you've been, right? Where are you from? Where have you lived? Because a lot of that determines where you're headed next, right? And so this opportunity, not just repping your hood, like where were you born, but like, you know, other places that you've lived that have also influenced your trajectory. Um, and, you know, for me, like I, I grew up in Philly, but I lived in South Orange, which folks know as the Burbs, very similar to Mount Airy. Um, lived in Texas, lived in Florida, in Philly now, like again. So but all of those places play a role in my development. And so I love, hey, people like just talking about where they're from, but also it gives us a chance to really start to understand your story really from the beginning. Like, where were you born? And then uh, we're going to work our way forward. You're listening to the Third Lap Podcast with Mal Davis. Yeah. This is Mal Davis with the Third Lap Podcast, and I'm here with Steve Jackson talking about his career and his pathway to where he currently is. Um, and so, Steve, yeah, I mean, this is a great chance for us to really dive in. So we talked about who you are. We'll get to where you are currently and the amazing work that you're doing. You riding around the tough streets of, of uh, <laughs> Mount Airy, dropping off equipment to do video shoots. So now the people got to know what we shooting, right? But, okay. but let's work our way to that. So, yeah, man, talk to us, Steve. Where does your story begin? Man, that's that's a that's a beautiful question. Interestingly, I'm actually I'm a as much as I as much as I I I respected the 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 hood rap, I'm actually I'm a I'm a push back just a little bit. Here and here's why I think it relates to where my story begins. So there's another book that I want to shout out for a second. Uh, it's called The Three Questions. Um, I've been listening to that audio book. I've listened to that audio book almost every day for the last six or seven months. And it, I, I read that book and it's interesting that because it's, it's, it's the kind of book that, you, that I've really tapped into because sometimes where you come from can trap you. It, it can feel like it's trapping you. Like, oh, this is, this is my story. And because this has been my story, this has to be, it, that was the beginning, this has to be the end. Like there, there's, a, there's a pattern, there's a logical sequence to my story. So if that's who I am, then this is how I gotta be. That's not always the case. Sometimes those stories that we tell ourselves are ultimately made up, you know, like there's, act, there's, there's objective truths to them, but sometimes there's subjective truths that we create based on our memory. And, and sometimes that, that those aren't always the most fixed things. They can change. And so I bring that up because, um, man, who, who I am uh, and, and what, what I do I mean, it goes back to just being a decent man, bro. Like, you know, we all, we all have a foundation, um, but our, our imagine, and I'm, I'm saying this because it gets into like the business, it gets into the advocacy, it gets into the leadership, it gets into the, the community building. Like it, 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 it comes from a space of what is, what is my heart telling me today? Not necessarily what, what was it telling me yesterday, that's important, but like, you know, what is my heart telling me today? And can I, can I let go of yesterday, still remember it, but not harbor on it and be um, and be a victim of it. So, uh, but that, that's a little bit of context of how I think. Can, can you repeat the question one more time for me, just so I hit it on the head? Yeah, of course. Um, and what you said is 100% correct around the fact that where we're from can really trap us. And that's, again, why I love talking about it, right? Because where you're from absolutely will, in many instances, determine where you go if you allow it. Um, and so for everyone that's been on here, some people have been from some wild, crazy, tough places. Some people have been from some really nice okay. places, but no matter what, they all had to overcome something to get to where they were going. And okay. so, yeah, again, I mean, really the question is more so around where would you say your origin story begins, right? Like we're talking about superhero Steve. And so when we're looking at Steve's comic book, the story got to start like Spider-Man got bit by a spider, right? Like everybody's story starts somewhere. So Where's Steve's superhero story, right? Like the, the the path that you're on right now. Where would you say that starts? Where would you want to begin it? Interesting. I'm a I'm a I'm a make a, a funny thing with that that narrative. I'm gonna do some Quentin Tarantino. Not that I'm a big fan of Quentin Tarantino because that man stays being racist in his movies, but he has an interesting storytelling style. That being said, I was started 
So I had, man, I, I was blessed, bro. Blessed with two parents. I'm not, I'm, I'm gonna, if I'm gonna shout out my dad, I'm gonna shout out my mom. My, my mom is OG, number one, saw her yesterday. Beautiful, amazing woman. My dad, and they actually passed away nine years ago tomorrow. Tomorrow will be the ninth anniversary of his passing. I had a special relationship with my dad, man. He was, he was, uh, he was my best friend. Um, definitely uh, gave me incredible counsel, very loving, very affectionate. Like for, for black men, he was, he was, he was someone who showed me uh, one, the, the, the intellect and the strength and then the emotionality, you know what I mean? The humor, the, the, the laughter, the fun. Um, and so he, he, he gave me um, a full palette of you know, just, hey, this is, this, is, this is who I am, you know what I'm saying? And it was a beautiful thing. And I bring it up because nine years ago today, I was flying down to Florida. My parents had moved down to Florida, you know, which, which was really great for them. My dad had cancer, man. He had um, uh, stage four bladder cancer that had metastasized to his, to his stomach. And um, I flew down, bro, nine years ago today. I flew down to Florida. I, this is crazy. I'm even telling the story. Nine years ago today, I flew down to Florida because um, I was still living here. Uh, I, was, I started the Advocacy Institute, you know what I'm saying? I was doing my thing, um, a lot of community organizing. And um, my brother picks me up from the airport. Uh, we drive home. It's pretty late. It's like, it's like 9, 30 p.m., 10 p.m. I get home. I get to my parents' house, I'm talking to my mom, my brother. And we're just cracking a couple of jokes, just busting it up. And my mom's like, hey, you should go say hi to your dad. And I was like, oh, I, I figured he was asleep. Like, if he's not down here, I'm just assuming that he's asleep or something like that. I don't know. I'm like, yeah, of course. So I, I go upstairs and all the lights on the second floor, they had two floor, they had a two story house home. And all the lights were out on the second floor, except for the light in the bathroom. And the bathroom light casted light into their bedroom through the doorway. So I'm walking in and I walk in through the, I walk through the threshold of, the, of their room and my dad gets like spooked. He's like, oh, that's Steve. It's like, I thought you were an angel, man. And we had a, a, a beautiful conversation in that moment. I was there for him. I, I don't know. It's, you know, those, those moments when you know something serious is going on, you know why. You don't, you, don't, you don't know the exact status, but you're like, yo, this is like very real right now. Next morning, I spent another like hour or two with him before he passed, man. And, um, man, he, he, whew. Um, as far as origin stories go, uh, after he passed, it felt like he was with me. To this day, I feel like he's at my back. Wind, pushing. In, in the most loving, respectful way. So much so that his passing was the reason that I started a basketball mentorship program in, in Kensington. That's Despite COVID, would, would still be going on. That's how I met Rick. Um, that's how I met my homie Pat. That's how I know a, a lot of the young guys that, that I work with, a lot of the young guys through that actually ended up in the Advocacy Institute. And that was, that, that's, that's part of legacy. And that's, 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 that's the other side of the coin for, to your point, man, where do you come from? Because it's unlikely that I would have started that had my dad not done something similar to that when I was a kid. When I was a kid, he had something called Camp Sweat. He was a teacher. Over the summer, he'd get a bunch of kids together from our neighborhood and we would, basketball, baseball, football, bike riding, clean up the park, da 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 Like we would just be doing positive. It was usually young boys. I remember it being, boy. it was like a brotherhood. And had he not done that when I was a kid, I wouldn't have thought to do that now. Uh, you know what I mean? It was kind of a continuation. So incredible example of a man um, who had, you know, his own battles and struggles uh, that are, you know, don't need to be shared here, but, um, yeah, he, had, you know, he had his challenges and um, he did his best to be a decent man. And, um, and, he, and he was, and I try to continue that. And um, I would bounce around for, for other origins, but that, that would be, um, and shout out to my mom, you know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, that would be one of the origins for sure. You're listening to the Third Lap Podcast with Mal Davis. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not even gonna hold you. I mean, you was talking about it like I'm over here, like tearing up, bro. Cause like that's I'm not even I'm that serious, you know what I mean? Like that really hit me in my chest. Cause I feel like I, I I thought about the relationship I have with my father, and when he eventually does transition, like between him and my mother, man, those will be two of the hardest deaths I'll ever have to face in my whole life. And 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 personally, my two greatest fears in life. 
right, is losing those two people who have literally influenced and molded me every way imaginable. And so hearing you talk about your dad, like it did really just that, like it hit me in my chest. And I'm sure when people are listening, it'll hit them in theirs too. And I appreciate the transparency and just the honesty. Um, and it's awesome that your father set that example for you. So you knew what to do, right? And, you know, we have a lot of arguments and back and forth around the importance of fathers. And, you know, no knock on any woman. My mother raised me as a single mom and did a hell of a job, taught me how to be a man in a lot of ways. So let's refute that, that lie off rip. But having my father there to be able to model it made the difference. Um, mm -hmm. And so, you know, uh, it was dope hearing how your father impacted your life and ultimately led to your breakthroughs professionally because you saw him do it. And what was your father's name, bro? Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. And so we're gonna have a <laughs> we're gonna have a, a moment of silence for your pops real quick, man, for Michael Jackson. And may he rest in peace, man. And may you know his his legacy continue to live on through the work that you do. That's amazing. And so you said that you went down to Florida, you were able to. And that's a beautiful thing, be able to share that time with your pops, right? Like I missed that when my grandmother passed away and that led, I fell off a cliff. Like that, yeah. that almost ended my life, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. here because of what you said that she came back to me and was like, yo, get, get it together, my brother. But not having that moment can play itself out in crazy ways and crazy dynamics in someone's life. So awesome you were able to share that with your father. And so he passes away nine years ago in nine years, Steve, you've done so many incredible things. So let's walk us through some of your career accomplishments. Um, you mentioned being with advocacy. You you have Jackson Core. Um, you started camps and opportunities. Walk us through some of these career highlights so we get a better understanding of what you've been able to do since your father passed. Got you, bro. So I'll start with the Advocacy Institute. So I was working for, uh, working with, I don't like saying working for, but working with Health Promotion Council and um, doing some awesome work, man. I actually, I, I started working with them because uh, I attended a panel discussion and saw the executive director and I was in ball I was wearing, I might even wear these same ball shorts. I was wearing ball shorts and a t-shirt and went up to her and was like, hey, I have a job, but like, I'd love to volunteer and just help out. And she made the mistake to give me her cell phone number and I blew her up. Like I'm talking, bro. <laughs> She regretted giving me her phone number. Like, there's no doubt in my mind. Um, got a job with, with the Health Promotion Council and was, and was honored to, to be on their team. And while being a nutrition educator, I, um, I you know, go, going into schools and, and kind of doing the USDA line, like that, that's, 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 you're pandering and peddling somebody else's, it's empire. You know what I'm saying? That's empire building. And, and that, that's no good. So, you know, while I, I did toe the line more or less, um, I realized early on that there had to be a leadership component to it. There had to be a, a cultural component to it where, you know, young folks, as do we all, are able to, um, you know, raise their voices and, and stand for something that has to do with their health. You know what I'm saying? Not many young people have a say in the anything that's in their household, let alone the food. You know what I'm saying? Like for multiple reasons. It is pretty unfair to go in as a nutrition educator, as I was, and be like, hey, you should be eating fruits and vegetables. And they're like, have you seen my grocery store? Or are you going to tell my mom? Or I don't, like, do you know how much money we got? You know what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't, it doesn't translate. So I wanted to build something that was youth and leadership and food. And I uh, was given an opportunity by their team. Uh, shout out to Tanisha Banks. She was, she was uh, my big sister at the time and a huge help. And she gave me an opportunity to build what they call the Advocacy Institute. And I, just as a, as a relay back to the story about my dad, this was about six or eight months before he passed. I, had a, I was doing like the pitch to the executive director who I, who I had been blowing up her phone. By now, I've been working for them for a year or so. And I had a pitch, a pitch opportunity for her, uh, Tanisha, and then some other folks. Uh, shout out to Vanya, um, who was in the room. And I had a, a, a recorder sitting on the table. Did the pitch, recorded the jaunt, sent the recorder to my pop. Long story short, they gave me an opportunity to, to build a curriculum and do a training program with young folks around food and food justice. And it eventually became more public health oriented. But I was able to, um, with, with, with a community, 
you know what I mean? A um, lot of long hours uh, to build something that was around youth and leadership and, and advocacy. And, and, it, and it became a thing. It still, it still exists. It still goes on, which is so dope. I'm very honored to have been there in the beginning parts of it um, and to be able to support now, whether from afar or intimately, like, yo, I'm, 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 I'm on board. I'm here to help. Um, that does relate to, I know you're, there's going to be, there are going to be questions around challenges. I will admit two challenges. One, the challenge of building something like that. It takes a lot of work, but that's a part of the process. The second and large or more primary challenge was how do you sustain something like that? And I don't know how much you want to talk about this particular career point, because I'm down to move on, but I will say that Anytime you try to sustain a movement or a program or an initiative or whatever the policy, whatever, money, you got to talk money and, and staffing and the team. And it became and in full transparency, um, what was once kind of a sole vision. This is just me being hundred percent transparent. And I will not, I will not act like I am perfect. You know what I'm saying? I made many mistakes to go from a singular visionary to a team of folks who have their own visions is challenging. And it's easy to feel like they're not hearing me, they're not seeing me, they're not valuing me, which is possible. That's definitely a story, a narrative that can exist. But it, it, it became something that was, that was pretty toxic. And um, it was something that I didn't, I didn't want my legacy with this program to be toxicity or drama. It was like, look, I'm, I was able to, to support building it this far. They got capable folks on it now. I'm going to take a step back and, and see what else is available to me. And that, was, that was one big challenge. That's one big challenge I try to learn from and, and implement today. Because, you know, having started a, a, a for-profit company that does, you know, a number of different things, you know, video and, and, and media and production being one of them, um, I have to be mindful of my team and our team, the team. I was just on the phone with, with one, of the, one of our teammates and being able to strike a, a balance between a positive relationship and a professional relationship. You know what I'm saying? Where I can be big bro and kind of your boss. A little bit, not a lot, but a little bit. You know what I'm saying? So um, I, that's a challenging balance to strike because you've got to build boundaries. Uh, but it's definitely one thing that I learned from uh, the Advocacy Institute journey. Yeah, I mean, it is amazing. That I hope that you are proud of the fact that, you know, AI still being executed like my wife is now the manager you know what I mean she's she's taking over um shout outs to her and her whole team though because it's not just her um there's so many people involved I shout out all of them and you because what you all are doing and how it has evolved is just incredible um I got to see my two younger cousins Jasmine and Jada participate right like I've met some other really amazing young people through Advocacy Institute. And I know that it's having a huge impact on their lives. And so shout outs to all of you for taking the time to build something so foundational and incredible, but shout outs to you for also realizing it was time to take a step back <laughs> that, you know, Steve had done with Steve. And, and this is something for me, and I'm not gonna go harp on this, but I'll just wanna touch on this and then let's get back to your story. But something that I feel like a lot of us misidentify is how long we're supposed to be somewhere, right? What is our tenure? And one of my young boys hit me the other day and I was telling him, you know, we was talking about X, Y, and Z, but he was like, yo, I like the fact that you don't just stay somewhere for real long. And I had to be real with them. I was like, you know, the, when I get bored, I'm out. If you, if, if, yes. I've, if I've learned the routine of this opportunity, I gotta go because I need to be challenged literally every single day. Um, and if I've uncovered and if I can go into robot response mode and just do the job, I have to leave. And so it was good that, you know, it may not have been that for you in that specific situation, but you are self-reflective enough to understand that like, hey, Steve being a part of this might not be the best outcome for the team. And for me, that's leadership, right? Like, you know, when you see somebody that can, you, you guided them to where they were supposed to be, and then we're able to hand it off to the next person that stepped in. Um, but talk to us a little bit about that transition. So, I mean, that's hard, man. You you handed your baby off to somebody else, to a group of other people and expected them to execute on what you said was a singular vision initially. 
man, that's a huge question. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna try and break it down into chunks. So um, my, my primary goal or, or um, objective was to do no harm, do no harm. There were, there were young people involved. I have zero interest, zero <laughs> interest in creating this story uh, of, of toxicity. Like, you know, and, and I, was, I was contributing to it. So as difficult as it was, it was also, it was freeing. It was, it was liberating because, um, you know, the, the sustainability questions had been discussed to a certain extent. So it wasn't as though the program would lived or died with me. This is actually something that I'm, that I'm learning about with, 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 with the company is can you have the, the courage, the courageous conversations, um, because it's not as though it's one crazy conversation and then you've evolved. You know what I'm saying? It's a gradual process. So can you schedule or can you create spaces for ongoing conversations to build the, the stamina, the endurance to deal with the, the, the to your, your, your point about, about our parents and, and their passings and, and the fears, like, yo, we all transition. Death is a part of life. You know what I'm saying? So like, can we create conversations in life to prepare for death. And with the Advocacy Institute, it was, look, <laughs> I'm not trying to cause any problems. I guess this is the direction. I don't like it, but that's fine. It's not up to me. So here's what I'm gonna do. Because I'm emotionally attached to it, I need to be very careful in how I continue to engage with it because it's possible that I will do harm, that I will have the, the best intentions you know, Superman, Steve, like, I'm gonna come in here and do what I do. And not like, that's not necessarily the case. You know, a super quick tangent. Imagine all those buildings that Superman flies through on his way to save a cat. And the dude whose house it was is like, bro, you're gonna build my house back? Like, oh, I'm sorry, I was on my way to save the world. Like, nah, bro, well, my world is messed up now. So the main character in my story isn't the main character in somebody else's story. So I need to respect the fact that you know, this transition is more than likely going to happen. How can it happen in the most peaceful, a peaceful transition of power? And, and if there's some, some hits to take, I'll take them. Nobody's taking the hits for me. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to take these hits. They're going to be hard. I'm going to take them out. I want to take them, but I've set up these crazy conversations and preparation for those hits. But I'm not being side blinded or sidelined or, well, I don't know what that saying is, but um, <laughs> I'm seeing them come. I see them coming. And um, I can prepare for it. And how that uh, launched me into some next initiatives is one, it better prepared me for uh, continuing to be a mentor. Um, so I'm so, you know, it's something that you can definitely relate to. And it's, it's something that's, that's a lifelong thing. You know what I'm saying? Mentorship is a lifelong journey, whether you are a mentor or you are a mentee or that in that dynamic. Um, and then two, for, for, for the business that I started. I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump right to the chase on this. I, my goal for 2021 is to be a payroll salary employee. I don't, I don't want it to be, um, you know, when you start off as a startup, more often than not, it's going to be, you're, you, you're a single member LLC or you're a sole proprietorship. And basically you are your business. You are the brand. I don't, I'm going to be honest. I don't want that. And there was a point, there's a reason why I called it Jackson Court. Like there's obviously, oh, this is going to be me. And that's fine for a time in the beginning of life, you know what I'm saying? Your ego is huge. You're a teenager, you, have, you know what I'm saying? You, you have your ego, you need your ego to be big. Um, but as you age and mature, you know, you find more patience. So I, I, I learned from the Advocacy Institute work that create, you know, having those conversations early on to prepare for um, the next maturation. So that's a little bit there. You're listening to the Third Lap Podcast with Mal Davis. And I love the piece around having those conversations in life to prepare for death, right? Literally what my parents have been doing with me for the past several years is lining up all the bank information and next steps when they do pass away. And so I love that sort of comparison or analogy that you made there it is very poignant and on point. And also the component around like you are the main character in your story, but not in somebody else's. Man, man. We just had a president that needed to realize that one, right? And, <laughs> and so many people that I feel like we interact with, especially 
you know, I, one of my young boys, so you mentioned mentoring, I'm a forever mentor till I die, like informally, formally, doesn't matter. If I got a good word for you, I'm gonna always give it to you because it's imperative that you pass on positivity. One of my young boys, he had posted on Facebook years ago when he was about to graduate high school, that attention was the root of all evil. And you know, growing up for us, I'm like, man, money is the root of all evil. So, you know, I get on there, I'm OG. I'm like, yeah, man, let me put you on game, little homie. Like you, you got it wrong. And so, man, when I tell you them little kids, G check me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> him and about four or five other one of the little homies got on me it was like yo old dude like tighten up old man but they were right right like this this want and need for attention and instantaneous success has undermined so many people that could have gone on to do excellent things right and so again for you i'm glad that you have had these opportunities to learn and grow you mentioned ego ego is your worst enemy it serves you at some purposes, but through most of life, your ego is the thing that puts you into compromising situations and predicaments. And so glad that you again were able to like work your way through. So you're leaving AI because you know, listen, this there's something else for me next. You begin Jackson Core. You started, you said as a soul LLC. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And so start as a soul LLC, your goal for this year, and I love that intentional goal. It's to be on payroll. I got homies that own businesses that have not been paid yet. They still they still grinding. So that's a real goal that once you're in the black, that means you, you're doing your thing. Like what was initially like, what was the purpose when you founded it? And then let's walk our way to where we are today. Bro. Oh my God, I've learned so much, man. Oh my God, bro. Oh my God. It, it's been such a journey. That's the I, best uh, part, man. Is that it's a learning process. <laughs> Whoo, bro. So, oh, man, so much humility. So uh, humility and, and you know, bro, to your point about, about the little homies who, 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 you know, gave you some, whatever they gave you. Um, it, it may be that, five, six, 10 years from now, they go back to that same conversation. Like, you know what? Malcolm was right. Like, like the OG was right. You know what I'm saying? Like things, things have a way of changing. I remember, this is, this is gonna seem like such a tangent, but it's on point. I read this, I, when I got my master's in public health uh, a few years ago. And I remember I was reading this book by the same dude who was like the interim president of the school of public health at Drexel, which is where I was attending. And I, I scored like a, a 20 minute meeting with this dude. Read his book, loved the John. It was super popular. Dude, I can't remember, I can't remember his name, but go into the meeting and um, he told me something that bothered me. He said, always be looking for the next out. And at the time I was like, fuck you mean next out? Like I obviously I didn't say this to this grown man I'm in his office. So I'm like, oh, okay, that's interesting. But I was really like, kind of a, like low key offended, like the next out, my self-righteous self was like, that's why we got so many problems. Everybody's looking for out. Nobody's looking to put the work, da, 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 da. And it's so important because I was thinking about that the other day. And I was like, you know, he was onto something. Like, you know, I don't have to verbatim, whatever I heard might not be what he meant, but how it landed for me, like you, when, you, you know, when, you're doing, when you're doing martial arts or something like that, like there's always an out. And then once you're out, somebody comes with something new and you get out of that and you put them into something and they get out and it, it's, it's a dance. You know what I'm saying? It's a movement. And I couldn't, I didn't see it that way at the time. I bring that up because brother, when I went into business, I had no business background. I had zero business background. I worked for nonprofits before uh, HPC. I worked for Children's Crisis Treatment Center. Um, before that, I had a job, but out like low level, entry level stuff. Was never really in a in a leadership or managerial position, or a director position, or anything like that. Um, and so I thought, you know what? If I follow my heart, it it it'll work out. There is truth to that. There's also truth that you need strategy. You need business strategy, and I didn't know that. I thought I'm a. I built an app. With my brother, with my, my blood brother, my big brother, we built an app. It's launched. It's, it's out in the world right now. 
but I didn't, I didn't truly understand the balance between heart, passion, vision, and practical strategy. And the biggest strategy that I learned, we do, we do a lot of business to business work, Jackson Core does, less, less so business to consumer, we do a lot of business to business. If you can't help that business partner either make more money or save more money, then they're not gonna, they're not gonna buy your shit. Why would they? It's a, it's a bad investment. And I didn't get that. I thought, hey, this is the right thing. It's gonna, it's gonna serve a need. You could be serving a need, but not making anybody any money. It's like, right, that's cool, but we still got bills to pay. Like, unless you're making me more money, I'm not interested in your product. And that took me a long time to learn because it, because with AI and, and the you know community basketball program in Kennedy, which I'm more than happy to talk a bit about, like it was all, I, 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 wasn't, being exp- I wasn't being groomed. And it's unfortunate to look at it like this. Like there's, there's a particular narrative when you bring up like grooming because then somebody else is responsible for your development. But like, I, I couldn't hear, I wasn't hearing the conversation around strategy unfortunately, whether it's I wasn't being groomed or I wasn't taking advantage of opportunities, whatever the case may be, there's a balance there. There's, the truth is in between all my stories, but like it, it took some real like knocking in the head to be like, Steve, bro, you have to, like, this is the strategy. Here's the logic. I don't like when people call business a game because businesses cause people real suffering. That shit is not a joke. People's lives are on the line. But there is a logic. There are patterns. And if you can't see the patterns, you're not going to understand the strategy that's going to succeed. And you're just going to be keep bumping up against these walls. And you might get a little bit of success, but it won't be um, sustainable. You know, you won't understand the principles to employ in order to continue to have success. So that's, that's one big lesson. I have an LLC. Uh, I, I, again, I very much so look forward to being on payroll by the end of this year, which is a big deal. There are very strategic things that, that I look to, um, to employ in the near future, and they all come from a combination of the past and my imagination, which is, you know, a collective thing. That's spiritual stuff, so. Absolutely, man. And all of what you share around product development, so I was fortunate to have the opportunity to work at Select Ed with Wayne Tam and Eric Kim. I've never seen two sharper people when it came to like product development and pitching. When I started at Selected versus when I transitioned to Eric, I think left not too long after me, it was a very different product, right? It was a very different product. What you said about making money, saving money, that bottom line, they really teach you that explicitly, right? It's a lot of strategy, but I was going to say, or I was thinking as you were talking about it, some of the best entrepreneurs that I know never went to business school because they didn't like getting that foundation and how it's supposed to look. A lot of business schools are also teaching you how to work for someone else, right? Like business school is not necessarily teaching you how to work for yourself. So it's still implanting that lemming mindset in you where they're not trying to big you up to do it for yourself because that undermines their bottom line, which is to create employable people to right. make these businesses and corporations money. Right. And so it's a beautiful thing that you've been fortunate enough to learn through action, right? Like this, this isn't theoretical. You started with the with a product, one of the hardest products to push, which is an app. And all of the lessons that you've learned, it seems, has played an integral role in where Jackson Cora is now. And so started with the app with your brother. Um, talk to us though, what are some of the other things that you've engaged in? I know you've had like um, a mental health project. I was talking to Tim the other day. He mentioned that he had participated in that with you. And so, yeah, man, talk to us, uh, talk us through the highlights of what you've been able to accomplish so far. So I'm gonna do what I think would be the most decent thing. To be a decent man in this moment, I'm gonna I'm a, I'm a shout out somebody else because I could not have done any of this without this brother. Name is Shahid Days. Shahid Days is a genius, and and I don't like telling that to his face because you know what I'm saying he gets he, his head gets too big. But that man is one. He's very very intelligent, and then two, he's a great friend. You know what I'm saying like you need whether it's the homie Rick, the homie Pat, my brother Shahid. You know what I mean? Like you need folks around you who are going to one challenge you and then also build with you. You know what I mean? And and 
I say that because Shahid actually, uh, you know, shout out to Shahid, incredible guy. Shahid put me onto a lot as, as far as mental health. Like I had my, my master's in public health. So obviously I have a wellness background, a public health background. Um, but Shahid actually introduced me to Yale's Let's Lead program. Um, I am a, a, a fellow and a graduate and alum of Yale's Let's Lead program. It's essentially a leadership program for folks with lived experience, um, lived experience with mental health trauma who have stories of resilience and, and, and just incredible journeys. Um, and as a graduate of that, mental health became a much larger just principle in my life. And so being able to combine those relationships, that community, that brotherhood, that love, you know, with a real background and knowledge of public health and mental health. And then you add on the business sense that I'm learning real time, it, 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 it has created lanes for opportunities. Um, and, and when I say opportunities, let's, you know, let's get really, let's get really specific, let's get really into nitty gritty. How do you meet a market? I was just listening to this book last night. I was riding around delivering this equipment, driving through Mount Airy and listening to this book called Customer Centricity. Now, the reason I bring that up is because one, it's important to continually be challenging yourself in your own mode of thinking about your business. Two, okay, so let's get, let's get the nitty gritty. We're talking about mental health products. Now you can focus on, and, and bro, stop me if I'm going way too deep into the weeds here, but you know, as, as whether you're an entrepreneur or you're on a sales team or you're the leadership of, of a company or a nonprofit, you can focus on product. You can focus on, yo, um, we're going to make the best product and we're going to bring it to market and folks are going to come to us. The point of this particular book, and there are thousands of books like this out there, but the point of it is given the times and the, the level of technology and the ability to mine data, you can learn a lot about your customers such that you're able to deliver exactly what they need without having to like test your product as much. You know what I'm saying? Like you make a product, I built an app, which I did. And I built it based on my experience. I tested it with folks and showed it to folks, but I didn't, I didn't look at my customer first. I was like, I'm gonna build it and they'll come because it makes sense. It'll work, it'll work for me. I'm, I'm deep in the field. It's gonna work for everybody else. That's not necessarily the case. And instead of doing that, if you can, if you can find ways to mine data using technology about your customers, you can then build a very positive experience for them and increase the probability that they're going to want your product because you knew what they want in the first place. That's really important. I brought that up because, um, you know, understanding mental health, understanding, you know, being a part of a community that's trying to build and then thinking about these high level business strategies, you know, given the times of the pandemic, how are we able to connect with folks, understand what they're interested in and build from there? And I don't wanna to share too much because you know what I'm saying? Some of the stuff is proprietary and you know I, mean? I try to give all the special sauce, but there are ways to use video to mine data. And some of what we're doing right now is just that and finding the right way to do it by you know, pressure testing the product, talking to a lot of customers, doing some of these community care calls and using them as, hey, what do y'all think about this? You know what I'm saying? Almost like focus groups, but also very much so grounded in like, hey, this is gonna be a balance. Like we're, we're, not, we're, not, we're not picking your brains for no reason. You may remember, this is an aside, but I'll say it before, before I stop and, and definitely you know, listen to your next question. But the call you were on was deep because we actually changed lanes. We were on a community care call with yourself and maybe like 12, 15 other people. And it was revolutionary. Folks were talking about like, yo, we need to, we need to do this. We need to change this policy, community organizing. Here are some things that are going on. Da, da, da. And me and Rick were like, well, we're not, we're definitely not going to talk about what we thought we were going to let's, let's rock with this. You know what I'm saying? Let's, let's, let's be where our feet are at. And um, it, it's the combination of, and the grace to be able to understand that when you're, when you're cooking with a lot of people, you don't, you don't always have to have your hands in the dough. Somebody else has got it. Sometimes God has it. And you, and you, you prepare the oven. You know what I'm saying? You prepare the, the, you do your job. You don't have to do all the other jobs. And, and there's, there's a lot to be learned from having a team, building with a team, uh, and, and, and trusting the process.
You're listening to the Third Lap Podcast with Mal Davis. Yeah. Yeah, and being in talent work, it, I have a, a real strong understanding of building teams. And when you don't put people in the right positions to execute, how that could go wrong. When you don't have the right leaders in the position to execute the vision, that could go wrong. Um, one area, well, first, I love the business to business transactions because, you know, that chicken's going to get invoiced to you usually on time. Um, and yeah, that's, I love business to business. It's amazing. <laughs> but one thing that I've seen, and I'm sure my career will eventually at some point evolve into is a lot of like talent management discussions with businesses to help them build a pathway towards hiring equitably. Um, because when you don't have this background or understanding of how this works, your process is usually haphazard and dangerous. Um, because it's fraught with biases, implicit, explicit. Um, and so what you said about also learning how to lead and I watch football, like as an Eagles yeah. fan, I'm, I'm heartbroken to see the yeah. Eagles fall apart. But so much of it is because the wrong people were in the wrong places, and leadership wasn't taking place. And so, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, I love uh, all of what you said and the learning lessons. Put, put all the game out there, Steve, because I'm a firm believer that even if you tell somebody how to do it, they can't do it as well as you, right? Mm -hmm. And like, that's a big piece is even if you told me exactly how to do what you do well, that it doesn't mean that I have that skill set. And just because somebody has the skill set doesn't mean that they are personable enough to sell what they're doing, right? right. And so never worry about giving the whole game up. Like I've, I've always heard people say that. I was like, don't say too much. Don't say too much. Somebody might beat you to the punch. I've had people beat me to the punch, but what they were doing wasn't as quality, right? The person doing it, was just not a great person. And so all of those things play a role when you are your business and you're selling your business, but it's through you. Um, and so, you know, Steve, I just, again, see so many great things happening for you. You mentioned all of the different people that you work with. The, the mark of a really great leader is that they give the credit to everybody else and take all the blame on themselves. Um, and I've, I've throughout this whole entire conversation, that's all I've heard you do is just be super transparent. So I appreciate you, brother, for that. Um, and so I know that you all have been doing incredible work, you and Rick and the rest of the team. Where do you see this headed into the future? Whoo. Okay. Okay. All right. First of all, I love the challenge of sharing all the sauce. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Before I do that, I want to share, I want to shout out Malik. So Malik Harris is a phenomenal young man. Malik Harris, if you get a chance to listen to this, bro, I believe in you 100,000%. That being said, um, quick, quick story that will relate to where do, where do I hope, where, where am I planning, how, am I, you know, how, how do we set this up for ongoing success? Um, the first answer to that, there's two answers. First answer to that is I don't know. That's the most humble thing I can say. I don't know. Um, and, then, and then after I tell the story about Malik, I'll, I'll get into that. You mentioned the sous chefs. So important, man. I was just talking about this a second ago, like, okay, okay. Creativity, let's get, let's get real, let's get out in outer space for a second. Creativity is basically spirituality translated through the human experience. You know what I'm saying? Like, there, there, you could see it that way, you could see it other ways. But from my, from my experience, creativity does not necessarily come from just your human uh, uh, faculties. There are other factors influencing it. That being said, to, okay, know your personnel to say, hey, this sous chef is good at this. That sous chef is good at that. That sous chef is good at this. Okay, cool. To balance that, you've got, you, I, my impression is that while you honor and know your personnel, you also have to give your personnel room to grow. You got to do that or else they're basically just gonna become instruments of you and they're subject to your limited capacities. Instead, trust, man. That's why relationship, you, you brought up equitable teams. There's gotta be trusted relationships involved. So at some point you say, you know what? Rock out. I trust, I trust your heart. I trust your vision. We're gonna make this work. And that way, and this gets to your larger question about like, where is this going? I can let go. And I can, and then, now I get to do what you're doing. You know, if we all trust each other, and, okay, if, if you're, it, and I don't really believe in hierarchies, but just for the sake of this conversation, if you're, if you're the sous chef and you're working on this, this piece of the meal, I bet, well, maybe I'm thinking, I let go, I say, hey, I trust you, rock out. 
maybe I'm thinking about next week's menu. You know what I mean? Like I'm thinking about, hey, how am I talking about to the GM about um, getting this line of fish so we can do this next week so we can really bring the, the, the uh, you know, our customers in. You know what I'm saying? Like that might not be the, the head chef's job, but my point is like trust allows for a level of creativity that's very healthy. Um, trust doesn't mean a lack of respect. Like trust means that, hey, we all understand our goal. I believe in you, you believe in me. Let's get it done. You know what I mean, let's get it done. And there's gonna be feedback sessions that go two ways, um, but I believe in you. I bring it up because we had an experience like that two weeks ago or so, two or three weeks ago, where I let go of a project in very real time. I was like, yo, I, I trust you, bro, rock out. And the, the product, the deliverable changed <laughs> how I thought about our business mind blown i was like oh shit this is something right here because i let go you know what i'm saying very difficult but very important so let's get to, to the my, my answer to your question everybody's got their own answer but my answer is um first i don't know two here's what i trust my friend i trust that with diligent work sharp conversation the, the same conversations that happen in life to prepare for death this Jackson Cool, which actually has different components to it. There's consulting, there's the software, there's the media. Um, media, shout out to Rick, all in. That, that is, that is a, a work of the both of us, all in is. All in has a future in media productions of all sort, man. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get, here, here's, here's some deep sauce. Here's some, here's some, here's my deep sauce. So Malik is a fire photographer. This, this young dude is outstanding. In my head, okay, so we do video, that's cool. We do commercials, we've done short films, we're into interactive media. I would love, so May is Mental Health Awareness Month. What I would love to do is do a photo-based, photo advertising campaign around mental health that maybe, here's a strategy around that. So why would, why would a company, why would a media company who's looking to get into photography as an advertising platform or media form, do that. From my perspective, Mental Health Awareness Month is something that every mental health organization in the city or the region is gonna be paying attention to. We produce you know, a portfolio of mental health related photos that have a call to action. And we hit up these organizations and say, hey, we're doing this campaign in May for Mental Health Awareness Month. We'd love to see if you'd love to partner or just use some of our visuals for free. Now we've got their attention. We're able to build a relationship. We're able to kind of pull them into our funnel and start building that, that business partnership conversation. From there, we're able to then start kind of monetizing. We can see the impact. And even more innovatively, potentially, we start using QR codes. Imagine this, maybe not during the time of COVID, but possibly. You're walking down the street when it's not snowing and shit, and you see a pop in picture about a mental health campaign, and at the bottom, it's got a QR code. And you, you know what I mean, you put your phone up, log into the, the, you check out the QR code and it goes to a sign up sheet for a community care call. You know what I'm saying? Or a program that's happening in the Advocacy Institute or whatever, a basketball mentorship program. And there are ways to use media in ways that I and our team haven't discussed yet, but are, are on the cusp of our creativity. You know what I'm saying? And the strategy. So one, I don't know. I do not know. This shit after COVID might shut down and I get a job and that's totally fine. I'll do what I got to do. It's all good. It's all love. There's nothing wrong with having a job. It's all good. Um, that's what I, I hope to be on payroll by the end of this year. That will be my job. I will be, I will have a job. Um, what I see visionary in a vision sort of sense is um, expanding with integrity, man, being a decent company, you know, where we're able to spread out a little bit Hey, this is cool. Let's try this out. Let's let's partner with these folks. Um, let's use our business strategy to create healthy business partnerships. So everybody everybody succeeds. Um, we're able to <laughs> we're able to figure out how to live and 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 operate a business in capitalism and not just shit on the planet and everybody else. And we walk that walk. So.
Yeah, shout outs to the QR codes. I mean, that's been the wave. We was doing QR codes back in the day, rapping, like connect with the with the music and it'll take you to the website or like a music video. So been popping with the QR codes. Shout out to my man, Teddy Gandhi and Black's Apparel. So he leverages QR codes on the apparel that he creates. Have I, I put you on, I'm gonna text you Black. So you'll you'll really enjoy the, the uh, apparel that they have sure. without Teddy. Um, yeah. And he has QR codes on the clothes themselves. So when you mm. scan the QR code, it takes right. you to like a black history fact. And he's, yo, popping. Right. And I, I loved how he integrated that in a very foundational, but also revolutionary way. Um, and so, and it's funny, like I'm sitting here listening to you and I'm going through like the business checklist and I'm like, all right, check, he got that check. He hit that one check, boom. They, so we only gonna speak about you being on payroll because we're not gonna entertain you having to get a job. Jackson Core will be commercially viable and successful, right? All one, all in, like what you've poured your heart and soul into is going to pop for you because mm-hmm. you lead in correctly. You're building a strong team. Everyone that I talk to has nothing but positive things to say about you, right? And so that's really important for me too, as I see a lot of folks trying to make it but burning bridges and fucking people over simultaneously and it's like those two things don't necessarily match if you're if you're a robber baron like they teach you at u penn at wharton and, and at harvard business school to go out here and just pillage the the universe okay maybe because you don't necessarily need those people that you're stepping on to get to the top but when you look like us we're not afforded right. that opportunity yo we can't we can't lead in that negative manner we can't set ourselves up to call ourselves change makers, but then ultimately we don't make any change because everything that we've touched becomes scorched earth, right? And like you had an opportunity Mm. to go scorched earth on AI. You had an opportunity to go scorched earth on AI again when they tried to bring you back into the fold, right? And so, yeah, I know that, listen, like, you know what I mean? I know what's going on, (laughs) um, but I respect the fact, and I'll speak straight to it. Like Allison respected the fact that you stepped into that space on some like, I'm just here to help. And I remember she came home after y'all had a conversation and she was like, yo, like Steve is just a real dude. Like he's really stepping in this space when he doesn't have to, to help. Um, and I was like, all right, I'm gonna connect with him, man. Like this, that's strike three. That's the third time. Let me get with this, man. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, everything Steve that I've heard leads me to concretely believe you will see the success that you're seeking this year, sooner than you think, sooner than maybe you and your team thought imaginable because y'all are doing it the right way and gaining the respect that you're looking for in a city that's that's starving for folks like yourself. So, you know, anytime we connect, it's always gonna be about Steve Jackson Court and, and what's happening with that and what's happening with All In. Um, when you like, yo, Mal, I'm looking for a job. I'm like, Steve, no, we're not talking about that. <laughs> we're not even going to put, we're not putting that on the table. We're not talking jobs right now. We're talking legacies okay. right now, Steve. You, you'll get your work at Target if you need it. Target always there, bro. No disrespect Thanks. to nobody at Target, Walmart, Whole Foods. Yo, grind your hustles, man. But like, that's meant to be a hustle grinder, son. That's meant to be something to put in money in your pocket so that you could spend the rest of your days chasing your dreams until you die, yo. And if that's what you're doing, lock in on that target job, work that stock job, but make sure that whatever you do is leading to where you're trying to go, right? And so Steve, you every everything that you described today have been purposeful, intentional steps, whether you knew it or not, to right. get to get you to where you are currently, yo. So I hope again, that you take immense amount of pride in the fact that you've gone independent, that you've stayed independent, and that your independence will lead to the independence of so many other people. That's beautiful, brother. That's that's what this work is about for me, right? Is that we are able to enact independence, right? And, and ratchet up the fire for people that maybe didn't even know they had it in them. That's the blessing, right? Like then if we do that, Man, when we when it's our time to go and we and we go in whatever transition and whatever's next, we will have the pride of knowing that we left something behind like you did with AI mm-hmm. that will forever shine on people and forever change and impact neighborhoods and communities. Um, in my opinion, man, there's nothing better to do. So, Steve, again, I hope you're really proud of the work that you're currently doing and I wish you nothing but success in the future. And so we've yeah. talked about, again, this is Mal Davis here on the Third Lap Podcast with Steve Jackson talking about his life and his career. Um, it's just just dope, amazing dude, king out here in these streets, man, just making change happen constantly for us. And so 
Steve, we've talked about how we know each other, the hood you repping, shout outs again, the mean streets of Mount Airy. Hey. <laughs> uh, we've <laughs> talked about your origin story as far as your father passing away. And like, again, shout outs to, to Michael Jackson um, for really, and your mom too, yo, you know, I can't leave. Shout out, man. Shout out, mama. What's up, Mama Jackson? Peace and blessings upon you too. But talked about your origin, your father passing, really lead into a lot of the steps that you've now taken all the way to where you are, where you are now on the cusp of being on payroll, which is every entrepreneur's aspiration and dream to go from red to black, right? That's when you've made it. When you make a penny on your business, brother, you made it, right? And so, <laughs> and, and I've seen some dope human beings cross that threshold of making that first penny. I've seen a lot of dope human beings never make it, yo. Um, but so much of it was around the business being viable, right. understanding product development, understanding marketing, customer service, right? Like, are you someone that when people have an issue, you you solving that issue for them? And that's mostly also a lot of people that I've seen not go to black or B2C, business to consumer, right? Not B2B. A lot of B2Bs I've seen make it because again, invoices come on time and it's a lot happening on that side. So if y'all B2C and think about some B2B action, business, <laughs> business action, it might help you just gain a little bit more. Um, but Steve, talk to us, man. What is your motivation? So why are you doing all of this? Why, why do you keep waking up and grinding this and chipping away at it to, to get to where you're trying to go? That's a great question. Uh, man, my motivation. Um, hmm. I think, um, you know, man, so I used to do martial arts. I, man, I wish I could go back to it. I, I want to I wanna get back into it. Uh, but one of the things that my sensei would, would say, my master would say, was you get out what you put in. You know, what are you training for? I used to look at those, I, we would have belt tests. And I would look at belt tests as practice. Like belt tests is practice for life. Like, you know, we'd, the, 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 we, we would have a belt test with, with everybody in our class. You know what I'm saying? So it was like three, four, five of us having a belt test. It was a small group. And, um, you know, people, I might be a little nervous. They'd be a little nervous. I'd remind myself like, this is, this is practice. Like, this is a belt test. Like, let's not, let's not get it twisted. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, you get out what you put in and, and what are you training for? And I think that um, for many reasons, um, I'm, I am someone who believes in training for, for growth. You know what I'm saying? Growth mindset. Like just, you know, what what um what can i do today to get a little closer to to where i want to be i'm not i'm not super talented so i'm i'm a hooper also so i i played ball back in the day i'm not very tall i'm not that talented but i'm you know i'm half decent you know what i'm saying but i had to work like I, it wasn't it shit ain't come easy to me um at least when it came to basketball so like i understand and respect and enjoy the grind you know what I mean? Like I've actually had to create boundaries around business and my personal life because there would be days where I would work all the time, which is fine. And a lot, and to your point, a lot of people do that. God bless them. I don't want to do that. Um, I don't want, I want a, a nine to five, maybe a seven thirty to six, even that's a long time. But like, you know, I don't want to be working all day. I want to work to live. I don't want to live to work. And life is work. You know what I'm saying? But I just don't want to focus all of my attention on this particular business. I want to grow spiritually and that might not be involved with my business. I want to grow personally and that might not be involved in my business. So I wake up every day, get out what you put in. I, I do my best to put in um, the training and the hard work to get a little bit better at something that I care about. And then, and then take the time to reflect and understand that I don't know what I care about and let that, let that guide me, let my spirit, the unknown unknowns to, to come into view, um, even though I wasn't even looking for them. You know what I'm saying? And that is hard. And I, I, I'm lucky enough to have folks around me, so lucky to have folks around me. Um, shout out to, to my friends from, from college, Chris, Eric, um, everybody who, who, who shows love, shout out to anybody that, that, that I rock with that, that, that pours love in, or maybe they don't pour love in, but that's a lesson for me too. You know what I'm saying? Like my community is dope as shit and I'm blessed to have them. 
and and they teach me something valuable every day, man. And that's, you know, that's that's a recipe for a good life, man. And it's important that you don't have yes people around you, right? Like a lot of times we get into these. Sometimes I wish positions. I did. Yeah, <laughs> of course, because it's easier <laughs> when they just tell you that Steve, you're a genius. That makes perfect sense. But right. then when you're working for somebody else because your business went under because you was listening right. to people that weren't really with the smoke like that and wasn't really with you like that, like. I was, it's funny, yo, I was sitting here, I saw a quote before and like, I kind of like um, changed the quote to fit more so how I was looking at it. But basically the quote is like, protect those that stand behind you, respect those that stand with you, destroy those that stand against you. And I kind of like, again, edited the quote more so it's like when people recognize your talent, right? Like you'll have people that get behind you. So they support you, but won't necessarily do the legwork with you. You have the people standing next to you that's in it with you, right? Like they in the mud with you, building with you, won't go anywhere. And then you have the people staunchly opposed to you standing in your way, right? And it's like, once that light goes on of what they know you can accomplish, I feel like people fall into one of those three buckets. And like, they may move, right? Like somebody might've been behind you, but wasn't active and then stood next to you. I've had people that were standing next to me that became staunchly opposed to me. I had people that was opposed to my progress that ended up shoulder to shoulder with me and we doing the work together. But I found that like people tend to fall in those different buckets. And so it's great that you mostly have seen people either standing with you to do the work or behind you to support your work. And I hope that it, it continues that way because that's so important. Like, you know, we need that community we, we, especially as creatives, and what you said earlier about creative being tapped into spirituality, I, it made me go, hmm, I never thought about it that way. But creativity is outside of our humanistic experience, right? right. It just is. When we're, when we're creating these universes, Marvel, right? Comic books, um, all of these science fiction, like, like that's out of bounds. The Matrix, like, that's out of pocket. The woman that created the matrix, right. she was tapped into something crazy, bro. Like that wasn't just a lived it. She never lived that experience. That's not humanistic, right? Like that's something above us. Um, and why I believe so hard, wholeheartedly in spirituality is because for me personally, it's become very clear that there are things happening around us that we're not always privy to, but when you're doing it the right way, the universe lets you tap in, right? And you, you get Trump. So you get people that do it the wrong way and tap in can't control that, right? Like it's balanced. Good people make it. Not so great people gonna make it. It's how the universe works, right? But in the end of the day, Steve, again, like I said, anytime we connect, it's always gonna be about building. It's always gonna be about growth. It's always gonna be about expansion because I see within you a person that will be running multiple corporations before it's all said and done, right? Will have an impact that's so long lasting and grand that you might forget some of the shit that you're doing. And that's what I'm trying to get to is like, I can't even remember. People reminded me like, oh, you remember you did that? I'm like, yo, son, that's crazy. We did do that. That was popping. But then we did like eight more drums. And so thank you for reminding me. I'm humbled by that. The fact that we was able to reconnect on that. And so that's what I wish for you and your team, man, is that like, y'all are doing so much that people got to remind you of the good that you've done. That it's like, it's so many things that could be named that you lose track, bro. Because then you really end the work and eventually... But I, I, Kyle, the conductor who was on here several episodes ago, what he said is that he's training the people that work for him and with him to be able to ultimately take over the eco foundation and that any good bit, yo, don't micromanage your people, help them grow, help them expand. Like you said, you asked the one person with building that product and it came back better than you could have ever imagined. Eric Kim, who I, like I said, I work with that selected. He gave me this great advice. He was like, Owners, entrepreneurs end up being really dangerous because they know enough to get in the way, but not enough to do the shit. And when he said that, I was like, damn, like it, it helped me to think about things a lot differently and mostly to get out the way, right? If you have people that this is their expertise, yo, let them do their thing man, and get out the way. Um, and so Steve, again, it sounds like when, when it's time for you to be in the mix, you in, but you've also developed this understanding of, like you said, know your people, know your personnel. And when it's time to get out the way, you, you trust that you have the right people in the right places to get the work done. You're listening to the Third Lap Podcast with Mal Davis. Yeah. Um, and so again, man, you know, we're getting to the tail end of this here. We've talked about your career. We've talked about what motivates you. We've talked about where you're from. 
um, we had a chance to shout your parents out and, and lots of friends and colleagues that have helped and motivated you along the way. And so this is the motivational thoughts for the people. So this is again, like the two to three minute section of what do you want people to 100% walk away with at the end of this? If, if they only remember for whatever reason, they snap back in and we right here, three minutes. What does Steve want to stamp for folks so that they understand his message and, and what he wants them to accomplish? All right, I'm gonna do this real business-like. <clears throat> we're, gonna, we're gonna segment the market. So for the older folks, exactly what you just said, bro. It, it's that line from, the, uh, from Black Panther where he, he's, he's in the, the spiritual realm, the ancestral, the ancestral realm, ancestral plane. He's talking to his pop and his dad is like, he said, the greatest failure of a man is not to prepare his children for his death. So all the old folks that are, that are listening to you, prepare the next generation, to be able to survive and thrive without you. You know what I'm saying? Like really be able to let go of your ego so that you can, hey, I want you to, to, to be capable of doing this without me. This is not about me. So that's for that, those folks. For the folks in, in our generation, I would say, uh, listen more than you talk. You know, there, listening is some magical shit. I haven't done much of it on this particular conversation, but that's, you know, that's because of the setup. Listening is some magical shit. Being able to listen means that to a certain extent, you're, you're, you are, you're, you're minimizing your ego so that you're, you're really like, you're reflecting while also analyzing and um, integrating and synthesizing with what you already know. Um, that's, some, that's some powerful shit. That's some powerful shit. And you ask pertinent questions, you know what I'm saying? Be a conversationalist, like listen, probe, you know, be, have fun, you know what I mean? Be personable, enjoy yourself. But then, you know, be able to integrate all that shit into what you already um, are trying to do. And for, for younger folks, um, oh man, there's, 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 there's a few things. Um, I would say one, don't be afraid to ask for help. Uh, that's, that's a big deal. That's a really big deal. It, it can be really intimidating and you feel vulnerable and you don't want to feel that way. And you felt it before and people have taken advantage of you. And so you don't want to do it. I'm on my own. I'm going to make it. Self-made person, da, 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 da. That's not, that's not life. Like that doesn't, that doesn't really happen very often. Even the people who say they're self-made aren't self-made. <laughs> like we could talk literally, they came out of somebody's vagina or we could talk more, you know, um, figuratively in that like, yo, we all need support. Like we all get support. Name the person they got support from somebody. There's no, there's no way that they didn't. So that's one thing. And the last thing is, um, I'm going to paraphrase a good friend of mine. His name is, is Michael O'Brien. Very, very intelligent brother. You, I don't know if you know Michael O'Brien. You'd love him, bro. I, let me make that intro. Um, you'd love a lot of people, but I'm definitely going to make that intro there. He said in a, in a conversation that I, I recorded probably a couple of years ago, he said, go for it. You know what I'm saying? Like whatever, whatever, whatever you want, those dreams that, you're, that you don't understand yet, or you're afraid to chase them because of what might happen, Whatever, it could be somebody you want to meet. It could be um, a job you want to get. It could be a business you want to start. It could be a school you want to go to. It could be a move you want to make. Like whatever it is, um, you know, engage with it. I'm not saying just do it. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you, that might not be the best thing for you to do, but engage with it, grapple with it. You know what I'm saying? Like meditate on it. Just, it, it, it's going to be painful. Um, the pain of not knowing, the pain of asking those questions, the pain of a seeking the truth the truth is inside of all of us so that's really difficult to like do i really want to do this thing um and to take to let that question live with you and really grapple with it is hard as shit um and that's okay that's okay that's how we that's how we um that's how we find grace you know what i'm saying grace is <sighs> grace um Grace is granted when, um, when we can, we can, I don't know, man, it's, it's, there's, yeah, this, we feel things, let them go. They come back. We let them go again. We fight for them. It's in the, it's all in the same universe, bro. Go for it. Go for it. Go for it. If you picked up three minutes in this three minutes, man go for it, do it, right? And that's how this podcast started. I've stated several times, was just like, I'm gonna just do it. Um, that's pretty much everything 
that I've done. Like nobody blessed me into anything. Everything that I've I've pretty much accomplished as a as an adult and as a professional, like I had to grind that out the long way. Like nobody, even with this, like I have the support of of really close people, and I've been fortunate as heck to uh, connect with just amazing folks on the podcast. But I'll be fronting if I said like at some point in time I wasn't frustrated or mad. I'd be like, man, damn, should I keep doing this? Like, is it even worth it? But every time I get to that point, some divine intervention takes place of like, yo, just keep grinding, bro. Um, and what you were saying about being vulnerable, hey, yo, be vulnerable, man. Like we, especially as a black man, like I've built this wall around myself that is almost impenetrable, right? Like I can't be vulnerable. The minute that somebody sees me as vulnerable, like I'm a victim, right? Like it's, it's a rat, it's a done deal. If it's a woman, if it's a dude, if whoever it may be, they trans community, whoever it may be, because I want to be inclusive, right? Like anybody could mess you over. <laughs> it ain't just men, like it's, that's non-binary, like a mug, right? Like anybody could get you, bro. Um, and so right. like, like that's the <laughs> coldest part is that it's hard to remain open yeah like i had a whole convo with tim talking about the the podcast that, that potentially we're gonna end up creating and i told him that for me 2021 is my year of saying yes right mm. like i had gotten into the habit of saying no because so many people had done me dirty that i was like all right man i'm done like i'm gonna grind it from the dirt it's just gonna be me i'm in it to win it and i and it always goes back to a conversation that i have with my dad that ties into what you said which is no one is independent there's no such thing anyone that's telling you they did it by themselves they had a parent support them right they had a partner support them they have friends support them monetarily emotionally psychologically physically giving them a place to live right like no one has ever done anything by themselves it's a lie they might take all the credit no one did anything by themselves and so i had to get away from that mentality myself and stop projecting the fact that things will go wrong right like i'm not gonna connect with steven and rick because they just gonna do me dirty at some point what's the point i'm not gonna connect with tim tim come on man you gonna do me dirty at some point hey yo if you operating from that mentality like i was you know let that joint go man because life is gonna pass you the fuck by and you're gonna wake up one day i'm 35 and i'm looking at my life like yo I squandered a lot of opportunities and missed a lot of chances to do something progressive. And so, Steve, what I've heard you say throughout this whole show is, A, realize when it's time to transition because it will always be transitions. And B, when you do make that move, non-destructive, right? When you are making a move, when you have to step back or step away or transition, don't leave scorched earth behind you. Leave it in a situation where it could continue to live without you because that's a legacy, right? Like, let's stop being selfish. And just because we started something don't mean it's, listen, Brett Brown coached the process Sixers, but he wasn't the one that was gonna get him a championship, right? That's why Doc Rivers is here. Sometimes you just gotta know your position and your place and, and step out the way, man. Um, but listen, Steve, we are at the end. We have like maybe three more minutes left here. Um, wanted to go back over the books that you mentioned in the beginning. And then also if there are any other books that you wanna add. Sure. So there's one more book I got to add and I'll just, so the three questions, Don Miguel Ruiz, phenomenal book. There is my grandmother's hands, Resma. I can't remember his last name. Um, powerful brother who, who shared that story. Incredible. There is um, customer uh, centricity. I don't know who the author is for that, but it's like a, a Wharton book, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Some white folks all love. Um, I am half white, so you know what I'm saying? I, I don't, that's, that's not, that doesn't just give me license to do whatever the fuck I want, but um, I can talk to you about white people. And the last book is, who and this book could, could, could have a, it's a whole thing on it. It's called Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. That book is bananas. Um, I had gotten it from a good friend of mine years ago. Shout out to Leonard. Shout out to Leonard. Gave me that years ago. I tried to read it and I was like, this book is trash and just did not want to read it. Like it just was super boring. I didn't want to read it. Picked it up like three weeks ago. This John had me, I had to stop reading it. Just so deep, so interesting, so different in, in a very, and it's, it's the best way for me to end this conversation, you know, and, and with so much gratitude and, and humility, bro, that book will, will continue to, cause I'm not done with it yet. I'm only like 200 pages in, but 
that book will continue to remind me of the unknown unknowns. The shit that we don't even know yet. You know what I'm saying? What is knowing? What does that even mean? You know what I mean? Like, we're, you know, it, it, it's just an incredible story, very uniquely told. I also read uh, The Water Dancers, incredible. I read Under a Scarlet Sky, really good books. A Water Dancer is incredible. ta Coates killed that, John. Anybody who hasn't read that, you should read it. Um, but yeah, Zen in the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance is just like unknown unknowns, bro. Unknown unknowns. Incredible. But also very practical as well. I've actually heard of it before. I've never read it. But uh, I've definitely heard of it. I want to throw one in here too, which is The Noble Eightfold Path, which is a Buddhist book. Have you heard of The Noble Eightfold Path before? Say one, one more time. Yeah, I'll, I'll text it to you, bro. Um, I'll text you the link to Amazon so you could cop it. Like, this is a book that I've like given to people or suggested to people so many times over the past. I think I read it like eight years ago. Um, but it's like one of the core, it's the four noble truths and the eightfold path, which are like two mm. of the core books of traditional Buddhism. Um, there are so mm. many different Buddhist sects and like pathways that you can take, but those two books are really like the the foundation of it. And it's a lot about like right action, right thought, right speech, like all of the things that you need to do to align yourself more spiritually with your purpose and then also get rid of like fetters, which they call like weight. So things that are holding you back, jealousy, envy, hatred, like all of those things are fetters, all of those things are humanistic. And like, you have to work towards eradicating those to find your true passion and like uh, purpose in life. Um, and dope book, man. Like I said, I'll text it to you so you could take a chance to check it out. And so Steve, uh, where can folks find you on social media and like interact with your brands? So on, inter uh, on, on Instagram, it's just at underscore Jackson core, uh, core with no E, Jackson, C-O-R. Um, on, on Facebook, Steven Jackson, um, that on, on online, jacksoncore.com. Uh, feel free to reach out. One last shout out for books. Um, bro, I, so for anybody who's in the Philadelphia area, I use their app, the free library app. If you have a library card, it's called Hoopla. That's how I get the majority of my books. You know what I'm saying? It, um, I, I definitely ordered stuff on Amazon, you know what I mean? 1000%. And Hoopla has a bunch of audio books and it's free. Um, so definitely another, another good resource. But yeah, man, please reach out. Bro, I'm, I'm so grateful, man. Seriously. Yeah, no doubt, man. Um, and I'll make sure to get all of your social media and your book suggestions up on the website too. But yeah, definitely check out uh, Steve. Make sure to follow him. I'm looking at the website now. That's a dope. I love this website. This is amazing. It's the first time I've been. I don't know what took me so long. Uh, I meant to ask you if you have one, but this is, I like this. As the person that maintains the website for, <laughs> for the Third Lab podcast, I appreciate aesthetically pleasing websites. So this is dope, yo. Um, so definitely jacksoncore.com um, and folks just, you know, in general, I, I encourage all of us to start to connect, right? Like if you hear someone's story on a third lap that you think is impactful or empowering or very similar to your own, you'll reach out to them directly. That's why I'm putting the social media up here, right? Like that's why I'm putting the website and, and all of these things, because I really hope that over time this develops into its own organic community and culture, right? Like I'm here to curate and cultivate and create those opportunities. But in the end of the day, I really want, the challenge here is I want people to be more intentional about making the connections with people that will help them get to where they're also trying to go, right? Reciprocate, offer something in return. We got this barter, right? You have something I need, I have something you need or want, I swap it out. Um, but again, man, if, if Steve is onto something or doing something that you're passionate about, or you feel as though you all can work together, pay that man what he's worth, right? Because like he said, he's trying to get his paper. So we're not doing free projects, like hit that man with the paper. <laughs> but, you know, make sure that we're all reaching out to each other and connecting, man, because again, as the, the tagline for this show, each one teach one, we all learn together. That's the purpose. Um, but Steve, man, you know, I've learned so much about you. I've gained a greater appreciation for you and the work that you do. Um, you know, I really... I'm looking forward to how you and I can figure out how we'll continue to work together moving forward. Um, but like I said, any conversation that we have, it'll always be empowerment. It'll always be uplifting. It'll always be, yo, man, like where you headed next, my brother? Like we, like I said, go bust it out at Target, work that, work that graveyard shift. And then daytime, 
kill it for your brand, right? Figure it's always a way. We got to work the way though. If you don't have a silver spoon, if you're not being handed a trust fund that's some X age, you know, get out here and eat, man. It's possible, but you need a community. You need a team. You, you need a whole tribe and village with you. And so Steve, we're at the end, man. We made it. Um, congratulations. You, 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 you poured your heart out. You was that dude. This is a, a, a wonderful episode. I appreciate you. Anything you want to say before we log out? Thank you, bro. That's all I got to say. Thank you. Uh, thank you once again, Steve. And this is another episode of the Third Lap Podcast. This is your host, Mal Davis, signing out. Each one, teach one, we all learn together. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Third Lap Podcast. This is your host, Mal Davis. Please visit the thethirdlappodcast.com for more information about the podcast, about our guests, and also to see our reading list. You can find us at the third lap podcast on linkedin and facebook at third lap on twitter and at third underscore lap underscore podcast on instagram if you know anyone that would be great to be featured on this show please reach out to our host mal davis he's always looking for interesting people to learn more about them and to talk about their pathway thank you so much again have a good one